Supari Ozumo is probably the most beloved Famicom game to never get released outside of Japan. It was enormously popular in Japan, although all of its sequels were on other platforms. It's the first game to make sumo wrestling into an action game. And it does a decent job of it. Not perfect, since we're still in the early days for fighting games, but still very impressive for 1987. When you start the game, you need to name your wrestler. There are a lot of kanji to choose from in this case, too. There is a goal in Tsupari Ozumo. You are competing in a series of sumo tournaments, and you have to win a majority of your matches in each of them to advance up the ranks. And if your record is especially good, you can skip up a few ranks, too. If you have a bad record, though, you can never be demoted. Also, for every three matches you win, you get a little bit stronger. There's 55 opponents that you'll face, each with unique stats and abilities, and during a tournament, you might find yourself up against somebody much stronger than you. In Tsupari Ozumo, the A and B buttons are completely contextual. What they do depends on how close you are to your opponent, what stance you're in, and what direction you're pushing the control pad. Generally speaking, the A button are more aggressive attacks, and the B button are more defensive moves. It doesn't hold completely true, though. If you're far away from somebody, pressing a button will do a slap, or the supari, which the game takes its name from. If you're close, pressing a button will initiate a grapple. And when you're grappled, you should press in a direction and then mash a button as hard as you can to throw somebody. Every time you do an effective move, you get a little bit of stamina back, and naturally your opponent loses a little bit of stamina. You don't gain as much as they lose, so over the course of a match, the stamina bars eventually go down to zero. If the bar is flashing, you're in a state where you're able to knock the other player out if they are at zero stamina. In sumo, they lose the match if they are tossed from the ring or thrown to the ground. The most effective way to attack that I found was to push away from you and mash B when you're in a grapple. That throws them behind you. Then you can follow up with another slap from B. That seemed to be the most effective way to rapidly drain somebody's stamina meter. But you can also pick them up or throw them forward or you could slam together and bonk each other on the head. Even though the sprites are exactly the same, there are a ton of animations for it, and your character is always colored distinctly enough that you don't lose track of them. You might have to face down a purple wrestler, but at least you know who you are. The rabbit acting as referee, for what it's worth, is Tecmo's mascot at the time. He's been included in other game packaging, but this is the first time he's appeared in a game. It has another cute touch. If you hit pause, a guy comes out to sweep the ring. In between rounds, you can press select. That brings up your win-loss record for both career and the tournament. And it gives you a password to continue with. There's a secret move I didn't manage to pull off. And I do mean pull off. One of the moves removes your opponent's clothes. And you do get full frontal nudity. It's not a move you want to do, since it disqualifies you, but it can happen. Naturally, there's a two-player mode, and I think that's a large part of why this game was so beloved. The biggest problem with Supari Ozumo is that a lot of the action isn't really distinguishable from button mashing. It doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of strategy available to you, and hitting that button as fast as you can is one of the key things you need to reduce their stamina. That said, it is a fun game to sit down and play through a tournament. Matches are short, so that only takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I get why Supari Ozumo wasn't localized to the US. Even if it wasn't about Japan's national sport, there's a lot of things in it that would be tough to localize. But it's also not too hard to play, and it was the best sumo game around for quite a while. We're going to see two more sumo games before the Famicom is done. One is more of an RPG, and the other features robots. So if you want an 8-bit sumo game, this is really your best option. Fortunately, it's also pretty good. <laughs>